All right, folks. We got a really juicy, interesting, super sketchy happening here. Well, who is Ray Epps and what does it matter? Okay. In a recent congressional hearing, Representative Thomas Massey question Attorney General Merrick Garland about Ray Epps and other alleged federal conspirators that may or may not have been involved in the Capitol riot of January 6th. So before we get into the details, let's check out this video real quick. In fact, tomorrow, I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need, we need to go, I'll say it. We need to go in to the Capitol. Let's go! So I'm going to put it out there. I'm probably going to go to jail for it. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. To fed or not to fed? That is the question. No, that uh, the video is pretty telling. And in, in my opinion, it was. I mean, especially the part where they're yelling fed, fed, fed. And his reaction, he doesn't, he's not looking at anybody like, no, man, I'm not a, I'm not a fed. So, you know, that's kind of telling in itself. Because if I'm out there saying something, I don't care how ridiculous it might be because usually the people that are saying things don't think they're ridiculous but if i'm out there and everybody's calling me a fed and the reality is i'm not a fed well then i'm gonna i'm gonna look at you like you're crazy like what are you calling me a fed especially when everybody's chanting it so i thought that was pretty telling in itself the secondly the part where he's telling everybody hey after the president's done speaking you know, we're going to be going this way. The Capitol's this direction. You know, the Capitol's where our problems are. He's he's not only influential, but he's giving directions as if he's a tour guide. <laughs> so, so, so it's like, right, when we're done over here, we're going to go stir some shit over here, you know, and everybody be ready. Okay, I'll show you the way. And he was there the 5th and the 6th doing this. So he put in some work. Dude put in some work. Secondly, or thirdly, all right, I got some notes here. The FBI has a seeking information list, right? On that list, Ray Epps was number 16 out of 486. So it goes from January 11th to July 1st, and then he all of a sudden vanishes off the list. He disappears. He's gone. So that is super suspicious. No arrests, no raids. He's just off the website. So if this guy was so influential and you're really looking and if you're searching, if your duty is to find the people that were most responsible for everybody rushing the Capitol, I mean, this guy would probably be up on the top 10 list, right? Well, he was pretty close. He was number 16. And like I said, no arrests, no nothing. He just vanishes. He's gone. So that's super, super sketchy. Then you take into consideration the Trump and Giuliani speech beforehand, right? Giuliani was ridiculous. I couldn't even find it. It wouldn't let me pull up his speech because I kind of forgot that one. But I do remember Trump's. Trump was like, you can't take back our country with weakness. You know, uh, we're going to march to the Capitol. Very direction-like. Like he's trying to, you know, steer the direction over towards the Capitol. Very weird just like Ray Epps did. And then here's probably one of the craziest things right here. Ray Epps, out of everybody that had a cell phone, all the people that were there, and all that, each person has a cell phone. We all know that. And a lot of them are recording about everything. Out of 
all the video, all the surveillance footage around the Capitol, there was not one single, uh, they didn't see Ray Epps anywhere inside the Capitol. So I thought that was suspicious in itself. Then you got Enrique Terrio, right? He's the head of the Proud Boys, the chairman. And he just, so he was supposed to be there that day too. And he wasn't there at all, nowhere to be seen. And the interesting thing about Enrique is he was a federal informant for a number of years, this dude. So, ah, man. And then you you got the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters, and, and they've had people within their, not necessarily in their group, but on their websites, there's people that infiltrate these places, and there's a number of feds that are all in these people's... Um, ID lists and their and their subscribers. So they're all over the place. Feds are like cockroaches. Where there's one, there's a bunch of them. Oh, and we already knew of one Fed that was definitely present that day. It came out a little while ago. It was off an affidavit that was given. So we do know where Fed, uh, there was at least one Fed present that day. So another interesting thing. So FBI's have always had a history of infiltrating groups and whatnot. So now I guess the question are, are they leading the groups? And how much of a role are they playing within these groups? Um, you had that Gretchen Whitmer governor that was going to get kidnapped and who who knows what else. But the guy, I believe his last name was like Fox or something like that. But he gave, uh, he was going to do it. And then he said, hey, no, I was put up to this. This is, this is the FBI put me up to this. Um, I mean, it's, it's truly crazy. And then you have the four Capitol Police I committed suicide six, seven months after it happened. There was actually five, but the, the first one that died, was it was from a, a heart attack. And that was like the day after. And then after that, you had four more Capitol Police commit suicide, allegedly, um, up six or seven months after the riot. And not one of them had a suicide note. So, and then you, this is the most interesting thing to me, all right? COINTELPRO, with the Martin Luther King suicide note, with the, you know, the J. Edgar Hoover everything, Fred, Fred Hampton, um, you thought that that was designed to take down people of color back then, you know, that, that was kind of the, the, the perception we got on that. But now, you look at this, and what's happening today, and it doesn't really look like that was, it, it looks like they're just stirring the shit. If you look at it for face value, for what it is, it looks like they're stirring the shit. And where we're at in today's society, we very much don't need this. We're like a half a step away from from an all out civil war or some really other bad shit happening on top of all the other bad shit that's always happening. We need unity. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. But but you have this and it's you got a question. What the hell? is the objective here. If this is true, let's just say hypothetically this is true. There's a number of informants that were there that day and they were, they were, you know, uh, encouraging incitement. They were inciting people to go into, into the Capitol. How much of a role they played? I don't know, but that guy, if he is a fed, he was playing a big role and he's highly responsible for what happened that day. And the fact that he disappeared off that list I don't know what to tell you, but that's that's as sketchy as it gets. All of a sudden, we're not looking for you anymore. So, I don't know. I mean, you guys could drop it in the comments. Tell me what you think about this. Is he a Fed or is he not a Fed? And, and what role did they play? I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, you got the expansion of the surveillance state. You know, NSA whistleblower Bill Benny uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago, he came out and talked about parallel construction and all this shit they're doing with the surveillance state that they're that they're not supposed to be doing. They're violating our Fourth Amendment and and God knows what else. But you know, it's it's what can you say? You know what I mean? We're being attacked and we're attacking each other. So. I think it's really important that we prioritize our problems right now. That's what Fred Hampton did with the Rainbow Coalition. He basically, he didn't give a shit if you were right wing, if you were 
uh, even if you were a racist or a confederate, he didn't give a shit what you represented, what you stood behind. He just wanted to say, hey, man, we're all broke. And there's a lot of things that we're agreeing on along class lines that we could work out. We just got to get past our differences and prioritize our problems. And then we'll get back to that fight and shit later. But for now, for now, we got business to take care of. And that's why he was so, you know, that's why he was so dead so quick because he had it figured out. That's why they went after his ass. It wasn't a coincidence. And by the way, he was only 21 years young. So it was amazing that what that dude accomplished in that amount of time. But yeah, the Rainbow Coalition was a real thing. And I I think we need to listen to these whistleblowers from time to time too because um, you know, they're they're putting it all out there. They're risking it. They're risking it to to give us what they got. And they wouldn't do that for no reason. So I like me personally, I like to listen to whistleblowers. So again, there's just a lot of weird shit going on. And I I suppose there's going to be more to come out later on this capital issue. But it's not Facebook. It wasn't Facebook that did all this shit. I think it's safe to say that by now. They're trying to blame Facebook for why the Capitol riot took place that day. But shout out to Representative Thomas Massey for putting that mashup video out that was uh, on Twitter. It was pretty telling. And um, hopefully they come up with more of that. I... I knew that there was more to it. I knew there was more to it. I mean, it just couldn't be a bunch of pissed off people that are going there. You know, the Trump thing was weird. Uh, the Giuliani thing was weird. I wouldn't be against saying that it wasn't totally orchestrated. I mean, those four Capitol Police officers that committed suicide, maybe, maybe they knew something. Maybe they knew something and they were just like, Nah, man, we don't stand for this shit. And it got to them. Because usually when a person's super depressed about something, it takes them time. I mean, that could be false, but I would think it, it would take some time to build up to that moment where you had to take your own life. Where you said, you know what, I just can't go on like this. I'm going to have to do something about this. I'm just going to I'm just gonna take my own life. You know, especially since they had, uh, I know... A couple of them had kids. I don't know if they all had kids, but they had lives, man. They had lives. And, and I, I just think that there was very, very little reporting on that. And I would have liked to see more um, looking into that. But what can you say, you know? There's a lot of weird, wicked shit going on right now. And um, and it's always going on. This this context goes back. It's dated. It goes It goes back with these guys. NSA, CIA, FBI. These are, these are groups, these are institutions that are supposed to be designed to keep us safe. Are they keeping us safe? Is this safe? If this guy Ray Epps is really instigating us to go inside the Capitol, is that is that what you call keeping us safe? I don't. The suicide letter from Martin Luther King, they called Martin Luther King the FBI's most wanted they're just putting hits out on people. For whatever objective, whatever agenda, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that this is not good. This is not a good look. So we got to figure this out. We got, And the only way that we could do this is by uniting, all right, like Fred Hampton did. Let's get over our difference. Let, let's put that shit aside. We give it, we, nothing's about policy of substance anyway today. There isn't shit that's doing for the working people or any of that. There's a number of things, just like the reconciliation package, that we are way in agreement of. Most of the people want a lot of that shit. Uh, lower uh, drug prices, med- medical prescription prices. We've been advocating for that since 2006, and a lot of Republicans are for that. Yeah, they, they use prescription drugs too, and they need that shit. People, you know... Uh, People die from not getting their drugs and insulin, whatever. If it's too expensive, you just go without and then you then you suffer the consequences. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we agree on and I I don't know what the what the motive is with this because when we can't 
you can never settle your differences if you can't agree on what the truth is. And when so many parts are in play here, so many moving parts, it's hard to, uh, to identify what the single solution is to all of these problems. But I know that fighting and uh, division is not, it is not beneficial to the people. It's, it's not helping us at all. So take that for what it's worth. And um, yeah, please like or dislike. I don't give a damn, but be active on there. Like I said, comment. Let me know if you think Ray Epps is a Fed or not. I'd like to hear from you. And also um, subscribe. I'm getting my ass kicked in the algorithm, in the corporate algorithm. So yeah, please subscribe to the program. And um, yeah, that way more people, because if you don't, um, just the people that are subscribed are the only people that are going to see this. So if you like, dislike, whatever, comment, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend, tell them again. Um, then more people will be able to see it. So that's how that works. All right. We'll see you next time.